this morning begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer, if you have your prayer books. It can also be found in our service bulletin. Today we celebrate the last Sunday of Pentecost, Christ the King. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together, glory, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture reading. A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As the shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and within all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed. I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed the, with flight and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will be a judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Come before God's presence with a song. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the 
a reading from Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with your eyes of, the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for those who believe according to the working of great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come. You that are 
blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the, for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Are we sheep or goats? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today we celebrate the feast, the feast day of Christ the King. This special feast day concludes the Pentecost season in our liturgical calendar, and it precedes the first Sunday of Advent, which is the beginning of our new liturgical year in the church. Our gospel reading today is such an appropriate message for this particular Sunday, Christ the King. This familiar parable in today's gospel is popularly called the parable of the sheep and goats. It is also known as the parable of the final judgment. And also the parable of the great surprise. It is called the parable of the final judgment because when Christ returns as a triumphant king and judge, the passage is very clear that God will judge us according to our reaction to human need. His judgment does not depend on how much knowledge that we have, how much we love those that are close to us, or even how many times that we go to church, or how outwardly religious we are, but on the help and support of that we have given to others. The parable is sometimes called the parable of the great surprise. 
It's the parable of the great surprise because of those on the right and also on the left, the sheep and the goats were surprised when they heard about their good deeds or lack thereof. The feast day of Christ the King represents the triumphant return of Christ as King and Judge. In our Gospel text this morning, Jesus concludes his public instruction. And Matthew positions this lesson at the end of his Gospel as if he wanted it to be a lingering lesson in his listeners' ears. Although we are easily distracted, maybe, by sheep and goats, the primary focus is on Christ the King and his threefold presence in the world. A king that is King of kings and Lord of lords. A king that will come in triumphant glory to reign and to judge. And secondly, he is also the shepherd king who will gather up his own, the sheep from the goats. His third presence in the world is in a sense sort of a, a hidden pre presence. It's perhaps hidden in the fact that it's hidden in the faces of the least of these hidden under the faces and places of need and suffering. As some of you know, St. Francis of Assisi is one of my uh, patron saints. He was a high-spirited young lad, born in affluence, and he, he enjoyed a high-life lifestyle. He was a bit of a bad boy. He was confident and a bit cocky, but you know, underneath, underneath it all, he knew that he was not truly happy. The story goes that one day Francis was riding on his horse, maybe his high horse, <laughs> and he met a beggar, a poor leper, whose leper sores made his body ugly and even grotesque. Francis stopped. He looked at the leper. He got down from his horse. He bent down and looked into the man's face. And then he did something extraordinary. Francis puts his arms around the beggar. He puts his own face against the face of the leper. And he hugged him. As he looked into the man's face, he saw the face of Jesus. It changed both of their lives forever. This story, like the message in the gospel, is an invitation for us to reach out and to look into the face of another, especially those in need, to hug, to embrace, to pull close into us those who are hurting and those that are in need in this world. In this text, Christ is present in the world as the Son of Man. The Son of Man who suffered as we suffer and was crucified so that we might live. The one who has been judged by human judgment is now the judge of humankind. The one who was outcast and lowly now reveals himself through the outcast and lowly. As God wants us to accept and to love his son Jesus, Jesus wants us to accept and love his children. As God reveals himself through the face of Jesus, 
Jesus reveals himself through the faces of need. As God reveals himself in the beauty of the sunset, in the bounty of nature, or even in a little baby's birth, Jesus reveals himself in the faces and places of need and suffering. God is the great Father, and the way to delight the heart of God, our Father, is to love and serve his Son, his Son Jesus, to take him into our hearts, to be a disciple of Christ. Jesus is our great shepherd. The way to delight the heart of Jesus is to love and serve his people, his children, humanity, especially those in need. At the very heart of this gospel passage, there are three interrelated, very important messages. First, the basis for the final judgment is one's response to human need. Folks, we do not earn the kingdom of God by our own merit, but we inherit it by our faithfulness. In the end, God will come as the great judge, separating the sheep from the goats, the faithful from the unfaithful the wise from the unwise. Truly, there is nothing more religious than attending to those who need care. The second great message is that God is present in the least of these. Those in need, including the hungry, the thirsty, those in need of clothing, the sick, the stranger, and those who are marginalized in our society and culture and lands. Jesus can be found in the hidden faces and places of those in need or suffering. Jesus can be found in the faces of need around us in Memphis, Tennessee. And also in the face of a young boy and his mother in Liberia, Africa. The third message reminds us that service to another is service to Christ. In the end, God will not so much judge us for the wrong that we have done, but what we have failed to do. Especially if we fail to see or serve Christ through the lives of others. The scripture is very clear. Mark Twain said it first, I love this. Actually, I love it and hate it. Mark Twain said, it's not those parts of the Bible that I do not understand that bother me. It's the parts of the Bible that I do understand that bother me the most. Are we sheep or are we goats? It is my prayer and it's also my intention that St. Philip will continue to move forward together in faithfulness and wisdom to strategically find and serve the presence of Christ hidden in the face of those in need. Those familiar and those unfamiliar. Those close and those from afar. This will not be accomplished by one of our outreach ministries or even all of our outreach ministries. It will not be accomplished by our vestry, as fine as that vestry is, but by the entire congregation. As a parish of sheep in his fold. Now I know 
what some of you are saying or thinking, maybe not saying out loud, but some of you are saying, now preacher, you sure do preach a lot about helping those in need. Guilty. Guilty as charged. Folks, I say this lovingly, but if you are here primarily to find out how to feel better about yourself, maybe you need to go see a therapist. If you are here primarily to find the five steps of successful living, maybe you need to attend a seminar. But in this place, this house of God, I will continue to fulfill my oath as an ordained priest by preaching the gospel messages, including the very dominant themes of inclusivity and helping the needs of others. Those are themes throughout the gospels, time and time again. Now, I understand, I do, I understand that these messages may be challenging. It may be challenging to your lifestyle, it certainly may be challenging to your politics. But it is the gospel. Besides, the gospel will ultimately bring you to a greater sense of significance, a greater sense of happiness and joy, a greater sense of effective living, grace. And also, by the way, avoidance of divine judgment. We don't talk about judgment very much in the Episcopal Church, do we? Uh, it's clear here, and certainly in other scriptures as well. You want to know what might happen in judgment or how to be in divine righteousness? Read this gospel over again. It tells us plainly, clearly, Good insurance policy. Or I should say fire insurance policy. How about that? With God's help and grace, let us find the presence of Christ in this place and in the faces of those around us in need. And you know, thanks be to God, we won't have to go very far to find him here. We can find him in his real presence, in holy communion, in the bread, in the wine, in the water, in the prayers, at the foot of this cross, at this table today. So let us come and taste and see, taste and see. May the holy communion Open our eyes to see Christ the King in the world, in the world around us, and especially when we leave this place. I've said it before, but there are three parts of the liturgy. There's the Holy Word, there's Holy Communion, and the third part of our liturgy is the going out. It is the continuation of of our Mass, the going out and finding Christ in the faces of those in need. Oh, may it be so with us in this faith community. Amen. Amen. Amen.
us now stand and say together the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your service bulletin. Your service bulletin. It is the outline of our Christian faith. And thanks be to God, we said as a community of faith in this convention, of the, this Dyson Convention this past Friday, we said that together. An affirmation. Together, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of
pray for Christians that are being persecuted throughout the world. The altar flowers are given today in glory of God by Sally Magda Frost in memory of her husband Jay on his birthday. <coughs> Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating the birthday, especially Meredith Mitchell, Joe Solomito, Rob Turner, and Dwight Wagner. Let us pray for all members of our parish family celebrating an anniversary this week, especially Henry and Hester Boyd. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. pray for those that are continued to be affected by the storms and the fires in our nation. We also pray for travel mercies for all of those that are traveling during this Thanksgiving season. protection for all the families getting together. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Our confession can be found on page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer and also in your bulletin. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the one we have done. sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you into eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also and also with you. With you. Peace, everyone. Peace. peace. Morning. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice that we are here together, worshiping in this place. We're thankful for our visitors and guests helping us to worship this morning. A few announcements. Well, I mentioned uh, saying the Nicene Creed in our diocesan convention. It was a very strange convention. I've been to many conventions, uh, even back in my home parish in St. Mary, serving as, as a delegate uh, a number of times. Uh, but we've never had a uh, sort of an online uh, 
convention before, and it was very interesting, but, but it ran smoothly. It was of great interest because there is some controversy in some parts of the church about the Nicene Creed and the Lord's Prayer and such. And just wanted you to know that uh, out of uh, intention, very special intention, we uh, said the Nicene Creed and the Lord's Prayer. Uh, in fact, it was very creative. We were asked to pick an individual or a group of people to say the Nicene Creed from every parish. And so they did a sort of a uh, smorgasbord or uh, uh, bits, sort of sound bits of every parish uh, saying parts of the Nicene Creed. And so it was a wonderful, beautiful uh, visual of the spin of all the parishes uh, saying parts of the Nicene Creed. Certainly no controversies there. It was just business as usual, uh, but it went smoothly. A uh, special thank you to our delegates here uh, that represented St. Philip. I'm looking to see if we have uh, maybe people for the first time who needed instruction about Eucharist. But, but basically, uh, we will have Eucharist. Uh, I will uh, administer the host only at the bottom of the steps. If you'll continue to wear your mask, and uh, then you can take your host as you uh, leave. You can pick up your new issue of Our Daily Bread. We have a number of copies. It's a complimentary copy for, for you. They're uh, positioned in the back of the church in the Narthex area and also in the foyer. Uh, please uh, pick those up. It, that will be for the months of December and January and February. I want to make sure we, we get the word out. Uh, this coming Wednesday, we will not have the healing service because our Thanksgiving Eve service is, is that night, so we decided not to have a healing service at noon uh, uh, since we really are trying to encourage people to come to our Thanksgiving Eve service. I do hope that you will make a commitment to that. What a great way to start off Thanksgiving, to celebrate, as we say, the true meaning of Thanksgiving, uh, family, and get-togethers, and all that luscious food is, uh, that's that's that that's Thanksgiving, but the true meaning behind Thanksgiving is us giving thanks to our sovereign God, King of King and Lord of Lords. So let us come and give Him due praise and worship. Wednesday night at six thirty. We'll put this out in our newsletters, but unfortunately we had to reverse uh, our plans for uh, the Advent Adult Education. We did meet this morning for an orientation meeting, uh, but there's been a new directive since we uh, planned this out. And uh, so Sunday school, as most of us traditionally know it, uh, adult formation, which also includes the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, uh, will not resume until January 1st. Please keep in mind Operation Joy. Uh, that is well upon us. Uh, and also uh, our stewardship campaign. So important. Uh, we'll hear from Judith just in a minute. But uh, please keep those at the forefront. As well as the, our new ministry, the Memphis Food Bank. You can look at the Thursday email newsletter and there's a listing of things that you can bring and shop for. Uh, so I'll bring your attention to that. Can't say enough how important it is that you read that on a weekly basis. And I realize that there's some things that are in there that you've seen before, but there's always some new information too. That's our best communication to you on a weekly basis. Because Lord knows we can't plan a month ahead. <laughs> it seems to me about anything. Our collection plates are still stationary. Uh, they'll be at the back of the church and also in the foyer area. I remind
not ever take your bulletins with you. Are there any other announcements that we might need to make? Well, we are in the middle of our stewardship campaign. A uh, special thanks to Dwight uh, for being our stewardship chairman. But we've also asked uh, particular people to come and share about stewardship and what that means to them. Uh, so our verger, Judith Wilson, will come and say a few words to us. who may not, my name is Judith Wilson, and I'm an extremely happy transplant from St. Elizabeth's. <laughs> I've been richly blessed by becoming a part of St. Philip Parish family. I wear many hats that allow me to serve this parish, but I come to you today as your vestry. Stewardship campaigns are not the most favorite subjects for many of us but they're very much necessary in order for us to enjoy the many benefits that we have. So as I was preparing for this, I Googled the word stewardship, and this is what I found. What does stewardship mean in the Bible? I never thought about it like that. A biblical worldview of stewardship can be defined as utilizing and managing all the resources that God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of his creation. Let me say, read that to you again. The worldview of stewardship can be defined as utilizing and managing all of the resources that God provides for the glory of God and for the betterment of his creation. The central essence in the biblical worldview of stewardship is managing everything good God brings into the believer's life in a way that honors God. Now let's look at this a little closer, this God providing stuff for us. Just look around you. Physically look around where we are. what God has provided for this parish, what God has provided for all of us. I believe we can all agree that the most immediate resource we see is this building, the Parish Life Center, Bernard Hall, our beautiful cemetery, and the land that these facilities sit on. We are so very blessed. Amen. I would like to challenge each and every one of us to pray and to pray for God's guidance as we are all called to make a pledge for this next year. Every one of us is a steward of our resources that God has provided for us. The question is, how are we going to answer this challenge? How are we going to answer this challenge? We are all talented in some way. We may not think so, but we really are. And we need to use these God-given talents to expand the reach of this parish in bringing the message of God's love to a hurting world. You control your time, your talent, and your treasure. So be sure to give all that you are blessed with to God, to be used to his glory, and for the betterment of his creation. Your time and your talents matter just as much as your financial contribution. So prayerfully consider answering the call to serve. Every one of us is not only needed, but we're wanted in spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. So the main question is, how are we going to answer God's call? Amen. Thank you, Judith. You're welcome. As I said.
said this morning that she was a, such a good example of a, a willing and joyful steward uh, of her time and her talents and her uh, many treasures. Do we have any birthday celebrations today? Birthdays? How about anniversaries? This will be the boy's 71st. I, I believe I heard this morning 79. 79. Se when? Really? 79. 79th wedding anniversary. The boys, Henry and Hester Boyd. Uh, I, I saw them recently, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, arranged a meeting with the family. Uh, I think once every two weeks that we can meet for 30 minutes. Uh, but we uh, met as a family and, and uh, had a good visit with uh, Henry. Actually, Hester would not keep her mask on, so they made her come back, <laughs> which, is not, which is not surprising. Right? But uh, anyway, he's, he's in great spirits, and uh, let's, let's remember them. Well, I have to say that if, if you remember uh, or make a point to remember to maybe give a card and send it to uh, the boys, maybe for their anniversary, but also Laverne Day is at the same facility. Uh, it's called Shelby Place? Shelby Gardens. Shelby Gardens. Okay. Shelby Gardens. Uh, you can call the office and we can give you the address. It's also in your directory uh, for the boys. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a current address for them, but you might think about them and their isolation during, especially during this time and send them a card. It's, it's actually pretty hard to communicate with them uh, over the phone or, and you're not able to visit them. Um, although some people have been able to come to their, uh, including me, uh, come to their window. And uh, we talk through the window through the, uh, the cell phone. That may seem a little bit ridiculous, and I suppose it is, but it's not to them who are in real need to have visits and company and to see faces. Bless them. Yes. get that information from the office, but her phone number is current. Yes. Right. Thank you. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, it is more blessed to give and to give of ourselves than to receive.
Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks for Christ. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever <laughs> say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the hard wood of the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ has come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. gifts of God, or the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance upon you and bring you peace. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you for the rest of this great feast day, for our upcoming Advent season, your upcoming week, and forevermore.